Out you go. Come on. You can do it. Show the world your tiny little body. There you go. Look at you. You're queen. You've opened the junk drawer, the place where I show you some of the cool stuff that I have lying about. Today I'm talking about this little adorable guy, where it comes from, and how to raise this living piece of art. This is a juvenile praying mantis, but this isn't just an ordinary praying mantis, this is Paraboliferus cooli asiatica. And man do they get pretty impressive. So why the long name? Well, it actually doesn't have a common name yet. I've heard people reference it as black mantis or leaf mantis, but no official name has been released. Just to keep things simple, I'm going to call it cooli. Cooley was discovered around 1870, all the way back then, and still not much is known about them. Pretty nuts to think that this remarkable insect is now just getting noticed. They're found in India, Vietnam, parts of China, specifically in areas where there's lots of humidity and cover. Here are my enclosures that I keep these things in. They're basically just little coke cans, but they're transparent and have little custom lids that have hot glued onto the top. I've also added a mesh layer between the lid and container, just so they can get some extra grip. You want to have an enclosure that's roughly three times the height and two times the width of your mantis. I usually throw in some moist paper towel at the bottom of the enclosure that I spray every two days. I also add some popsicle sticks for them to climb onto as they like to hang upside down near the top of their cup. Due to all the moisture in the container, these tend to get really moldy so I'm able to quickly replace them. As they grow, move them into appropriately sized homes. Why don't we open up one of these jars so we can talk a bit about their husbandry. Like I said earlier, they need high humidity and should be kept in areas that are relatively warm. No need to soak these guys or bake them under a lamp. Generally speaking, a warm room with light misting a few times a week should be totally fine. Before we get into feeding, I just want to quickly talk on molting. Every molt that a mantis has is called an instar, or L1, L2, etc. Instar refers to early life stages of the animal, while L and L1, L2, whatever, stands for larval stage. You can use either term, but I prefer L1, L2, L3, just because it makes more sense to me. When it's time to molt, a mantis will grow too large and will need to pry its way out of its exoskeleton. Think of this as like trying to unbutton your belt or taking off your pants after a huge Thanksgiving meal. Something that pertains to all mantids is they need to hang upside down for this process as they're too weak to climb out of the mold. I wanted to get a shot of this but I really couldn't because I couldn't get my timing right so maybe I'll get a shot of it later. And this is another huge reason why misting is important. If the mantis is too dry it'll stick to its molt and die. It's very tragic. They're also super fragile during this molting and hardening of their exoskeleton so be sure to leave them alone while they're growing. As juveniles, or also known as nymphs, it's important to feed them very, very small prey like fruit flies as they're very, very tiny. When they get a little older, say L3, you can switch to larger flies. An interesting thing about coolie is they tend to prefer crawling prey. As adults, I'd recommend roaches. You can give them crickets, but crickets are loud, they smell, and they will nibble on the mantis if you're not careful, especially when your little friend is molting. Oh, and absolutely be sure not to house them together because mantids are cannibalistic and will eat each other if they get the chance. There are some species that can be communal, like this ghost mantid here, but as a rule, I'd keep them separated. As far as the pet goes, they're amazing if you're looking for something unique and easy to care for. They're kind of more geared towards the adult collector. They're like little paper aliens, so may not be the best choice for Tiny Tamertina. I hope you enjoyed this video and more to come on the junk drawer.